so the next uh, series of these principles that I'm going to give you guys are all from the same person. His name was Ed Seeley, Tiny Seeley. Tiny was his nickname, and he was a guy that I knew um, as a very young guy. I knew him from the Y, and I was a, just a kid. I knew he was a martial arts guy, but I didn't, I didn't really uh, understand the value of. I wish I had had been able to train with him when I was a kid, but I knew him, and <laughs> to try to explain who he was without anybody having known him is going to be hard. He was a very big guy. He was, it's tiny. He was like six, five or something and two sixty, all muscle, never lifted a weight in his life. He was one of the scariest human beings I had ever encountered really, but he was a sweetheart of a guy and he really epitomized friendship to me. He was like a father figure to me. Um, I trained, there was only a handful of people ever to really train with, with tiny. A lot of people might have trained or worked out with him a couple times, but he only had just a handful of, of full, really what he considered his students. And I was fortunate probably to be the last of his students. And I trained a long time with him, a lot of years. We had a unique relationship because by the time I started training with him, I had already done a lot of martial arts training. So I was into grappling and a lot of other things. Um, one of the things I realized about him was I was never going to be him. I couldn't be who he was. I didn't have his physical gifts, his speed, his size, everything else. So I didn't want to be like this kind of this half baked version of him. I wasn't going to try to become a disciple and be a, a version of him. I wanted to understand his principles and what he was doing so that I could take what I felt I could use and, uh, and incorporate it. He was doing the same thing with me. So what the next series of, of talks are going to be about all the principles that I picked up from him. I wrote down a bunch of them. There's, I could never, to tell you everything I learned from the guy would take the rest of my life, honestly. But we're going to start off with the first one, which is he would always say to me, you have to believe to receive. You have to believe to receive. And what he was saying was if you're so, op or so uh, pessimistic about something, if you doubt it, to such a degree, you'll never be able to receive any benefit of what you may have been able to receive had you not been such uh, a pessimistic person. Now, interestingly enough, he had a huge amount of doubt when it came to what I was doing. He didn't really believe in grappling. He didn't believe anybody could get hold of him. He didn't believe that even if they did, he could get out of the moves. So it, it required some convincing. and But eventually, because he could see the effectiveness of it, he really became dedicated to understand it because that was a range of fighting that he didn't really he didn't really have. He had some of it, some idea about it, but what was really interesting though was once we started training together, he would say, I do that. I do that same technique, but I do it standing up. So I'd say, well, show me what you do, and then we would compare notes. And I started to realize a lot of the fundamentals of how he understood body motion, mechanics, and everything was very similar to what I was doing on the ground. It was a different range of fighting. But this idea of you have to believe to receive, if you, I believe personally that doubting is a very powerful thing and it's a very useful thing. And I think it's a, a great idea to have doubt, have some wonderment about something. Don't just buy everything that somebody tells you. But it, want, it there's going to be a point in your life that if you take that too far, all you're going to be left with is your own pessimism. And that's it. So if there was benefit to what someone's trying to show you, you're never going to be able to get it because you're, you're just locked off. You're completely shut off from any. So that was the first thing he would always tell me. You have to believe to receive. Once, you, once he made up his mind that, yeah, there's value in this, then, okay, fine, let's explore it and let's go as far as I can with it and let's get all of the, uh, the benefit out of it that's possible. But if you're too close-minded, the best you can hope for is to feed your own ego, which is a really a false sense of who you are. So the next time you're, you're dealing with anything that seems to you, maybe you're not sure of it or whatever, I'm not saying don't doubt it, but the truth is never hampered by doubting. The truth isn't going to be weakened because you doubted it. Once you start to, to feel that it has value for you, then go ahead and accept it and see how far you, it'll take you. And you, often you'll find out that there's more benefit than you realized.